Robert Woodson is the president and founder of the Woodson Institute, a frequent guest on the show and a very wise man, and we're proud uh, to have him tonight. Mr. Woodson, thanks very much for coming on. You're here, watching Tucker. this story <clears throat> unfold. You've been in and around higher education all of your life. What's the takeaway for you? What does this tell you about where we are? I really think it amounts to child neglect and child abuse. Uh, we are raising children in an entitlement uh, mentality, an environment where they feel entitled, and so do parents. One of the most important books that I've read about this, and I commend to your viewers, is Richard Watts' book, Fables of Fortune, What Rich People Have That You Don't Want. And the sequel to that is Entitled Mania, where he talks about the entitlement mentality. The very fact that we are exempting these children from the opportunity to be agents of their own uplift and, and as a consequence, people like, places like Palo Alto have a suicide rate that is six times the national average among teenagers. There are people in that community who are wearing uh, uh, safety vests at railroad crossings because of the high number of teenagers that feel the stress uh, of, of meeting expectations. So I think it's, it's worse than that, this old entitlement mentality. Uh, that also exists uh, among low-income blacks where the highest death rate is from homicide because reparations is the moral equivalent of what these parents are doing uh, uh, among blacks. When we are creating a so, false, you know. Moral, uh, reparations is the moral equivalent of what we're doing. But rep reparations is, as you know, a, a resurgent idea on the left. It's suddenly popular, at least at least one presidential candidate, but two, I think, Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren, are now calling for reparations. Is that good or bad? It's the most ridiculous proposal that I ever had, I heard. First of all, it's important to deconstruct it a little bit. Reparations, you know, the, the question is, um, who pays and who, who gets paid. People don't realize that uh, it's, uh, slavery, there were blacks who owned slaves as well. There were 3,700 blacks that owned 12,000 slaves. And that, uh, three tribes, the Chickasaws uh, tribes, the Creek Indians, they owned 3,500 slaves. So the question for me and for the audience should be, well, who pays? Do the sons and daughters of those blacks and, and Native Americans that own slaves, do their uh, ancestors, do, do they pay? And so it's, it, it's a little more complicated than people are making. What about the whites who came here after slavery? What about the hundreds of thousands who died uh, fighting again in the Civil War who never owned slaves. Right. And so I just think that we ought to take this into consideration when we're talking about uh, uh, a slavery. It's, it's also providing exemption from personal responsibility. With all of the problems that black America has, for someone to say that the answers to those challenges are external. Let's just say we accept uh, uh, the, the premise that reparations should be paid. What problem does it solve? If whites paid blacks money on Monday and we come back two weeks later, what would be the impact on black on black crime? What would be the impact of drug addiction, about the high dropout rate? And so I just think it's, it's, it's lethal for, for us to just talk about a simplistic remedy um, so we can do virtue signaling on the issue of race and appear to be champions. What we have done at the Woodson Center is we believe you should look into your, the, the black America's past and find out how our ancestors achieved against the odds where there was racial inequality and income right. disparity. We built hospitals. We built schools. We had solid families. And so uh, it is important uh, for us to not uh, to, to look back, but also to look at what are our strengths. And uh, frankly, Tucker, uh, I'm going to say I think black America needs to uh, abandon complaining about what happened in the past and begin to address the enemy within. That's the challenge we face today. And we won't do that as long as we're looking to the people we say who are enemies to be our liberators. Right. It's just ridiculous. Robert Woodson, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you.